Hey everybody, it's Chris, Carbal Space Program. This is episode 10 of the Interstellar Career Hard Mode Life Support Deadly Reentry uh, version of my career mode. And in this episode, we're going to actually head to the moon to a land. We're going to, we created a lander, we put it into orbit. I did not show you that, however, I am setting up my encounter here with the moon. And I actually did throw out a satellite around the moon, a communication satellite, so we'll end up having to use that in order to transmit data back from the surface of the moon. However, it uh, only works during uh, a small fraction of the day, so we did end up spamming a bunch of science, but we took a bunch home, uh, and only because I didn't want to stay out there forever and just keep going around. I had plenty of life support. I had 80 Kerbal days worth, so with one Kerbal it would be 80 days. I, you know, I could have stayed there quite a while. However, um, this particular Kerbal was getting homesick, so I brought him home. And I believe it was Edbus, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we are just going to go ahead and uh, we set our alarm in Kerbal Alarm Clock. We're going to go around the planet and get into our burn position. And then we're going to go ahead and make a burn for the moon. Now, uh, this would be the first extraplanetary mission of uh, I guess ter terrestrial uh, we're going to be landing so this is the first mission that we've been landing on a body other than Kerbin and uh, this is a big step for the space program also uh, worth a lot of points if you can uh, you know if you want to stay on the moon and, and transmit a lot um, with remote tech it does kind of close the window on when you can actually transmit because uh, you can only do it at certain times and then with life support, you don't want to run the batteries dry. Um, although I've never had it so even with when I was transmitting that the battery would remain completely dead. As long as there's even point one charge in there, um, it doesn't go against you. It, if it stays at zero for a couple hours, then your kerbals will freeze. But uh, I haven't had that happen in a while. I did have it happen, though. I think there was still a uh, spacecraft in orbit around Kerbin that had this. Now, uh, what happened here is um, that was actually a miss uh, <laughs> it was a misfire uh, I did want to get rid of that large tank but that tank behind in front of that was actually a, a fuel tank with a orbital engine on it uh, the LV 909 or something and I did not want to do that but it happened so I had about well, close to 3000 Delta V and you know if I had that it would have made a perfect mission and I wouldn't have to worry about anything. I probably could have done a couple different drops uh, into different sp spots. But uh, I ended up having to use a majority of the lander's fuel on maneuvers, which I did not want to do. So um, that also detached the heat shield, if anyone uh, had noticed that. The heat shield that was protecting the science uh, bay, that 1.25 meter part. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I really was at the point where I didn't really care whether or not I could get the science from it. I just wanted to make sure I could get back. Uh, I did not want to scrub the mission. We did have enough fuel. I, th I thought at the time we did have enough fuel to, to get out there, land, and then get back. So I said, you know, the Kerbals don't mind. We'll throw caution to the wind. Um, you know, it's just another funeral if they, uh, if they die. It's not a big deal. Uh, all right, so we are making our... Uh, we're just kind of riding out the uh, sphere of influence change here. Uh, the, the the burn that I had actually wasn't too bad. It made it like a, a decent size, a decent encounter. So I didn't really have to mess around with it at all. Um, we got into the moon sphere of influence. I did a little bit of adjustment. I kind of slowed down a little bit, uh, and then I made um, got the periapsis a little bit closer to the moon. And then when I got down to the periapsis, I did a, um, a burn to get into a low orbit. And it was about, uh, I think the, the periapsis on the low orbit was close to 10 or 13, uh, maybe 10 kilometers. So uh, I just want to get nice and close. I didn't want to burn a lot of fuel trying to deorbit and then, um, you know, have no, no fuel to land. Uh, so I, I'm just sitting on my, my maneuver node now and uh, we'll be burning shortly at uh, periapsis to get into an orbit. And uh, one, you know, one of the things that you have to keep in mind here is how much fuel you're going to be expending on these maneuvers. So I'm watching the nav ball and seeing how many uh, 
hundreds of delta V, 100, 100 meters per second of delta V that I'm using up. And then I have the MechJeb delta V uh, vehicle stats on the right hand side and just kind of paying attention to that. Um, I wasn't overly concerned right now. I knew it would be close. I, I did not know how close it would be at the end. And I was hesitant on actually doing the landing. I was going to do just an orbit, but um, I said, what the hell? You know, uh, no guts, no glory. Fortune favors a bold, all that shit. Carpe diem, I seized the day. And uh, I ended up doing the landing. So once we get to that, um, you know, we'll, we'll go over what, what went on. And some of the things that I was remembering, and I haven't really done a manual landing in a while. Uh, I kind of have fallen victim to MechJeb's uh, efficiency and quickness and also autonomy, where I don't have to pay attention. I can just, you know, set up my my thing and then, you know, do something else while I'm waiting. But uh, going in hard mode and not using MechJeb for the um, maneuvers and all that shit, just... Uh, it was. It's been a while, so I uh, I was trying to go back through my uh, my data bank and my me memory to find out what uh, what's the best way to do this. And uh, I ended up doing uh, a couple. I, I had a wave off here. Um, once we get our orbit in, I'll make a change in uh, or I'll make a maneuver note to to do a deorbit burn. Uh, I do the D orbit burn, and then I do not like where it's going to throw me. And then I also forgot to turn off the antenna for my um, com communications relay. So it actually was, my battery was down to about 80, which is about uh, about 10% left, maybe a little bit less than 10%. And uh, I, I just wanted to uh, to wave off that landing. So I'll, I'll do the burn. You'll see it. It'll, uh, you know, switch camera angles to the... the um, landing or, or not the orbit but maybe the chase camera i'm not sure what it is whatever it switches to when you get into an, a sphere of influence and, and into an orbit uh so that happens and then i decide uh it's because i'm in the dark and i realize that my battery is um it just about expended i i turn off the antenna and then i change uh change my mind kind of just burn a little bit to get back into an orbit and then uh, a little bit further on in the orbit, then I'll uh, I'll make my change. So you know, here is another example of uh, wasted fuel because I ended up using fuel to do something that I wasn't going to do anyway, knowing that it's in short supply. It could have been a mission killing um, choice or decision. It didn't in this case, however, it's something to you know to be considered of and definitely need to plan for it. Uh, so. What I'll let the cat out of the bag now. When I landed, or when I got into Kerbin's 20 kilometer periapsis, I had about uh, it's a two seconds of fuel left. It was probably uh, I think like 43 delta V. It was ridiculous. So we just made it off the moon, and we just made it back into uh, into Kerbin. And then I had to deal with the whole heat shield missing thing, and that was another uh, story altogether. So. We are, what are we doing now? I think we're getting ready for our, oh yes, I'm just making a connection with the satellites, but I don't end up using this connection. I'm not sure why, but uh, I think I connected it to the wrong object. So I ended up using the Communicatron, like the expandable antenna that's an omnidirectional antenna, and then just waited for the satellite to go overhead and use that as my connection back to Kerbal Space Command. So this is just me switching to the uh, comm relay out at in Kerbin orbit. Uh, this is a geosync orbit, and I, I'll change it over, but um, it doesn't end up working the way I want to. I'm not sure. I didn't even look into why. I, I might have just selected the wrong target. I'm not sure, but um, didn't need it. We ended up using the, the omnidirectional antenna on the lander and waited for the um, moon comm satellite to go over so i'm just switching back here and um we're just going to get ready for our deorbit burn do a little science but uh i noticed that i'm not connected back to Kerbal space command so i just kind of put it on the back burner I, I didn't uh i didn't really pay attention to what i was doing i guess when i was doing the comm changes uh there is a connection back but i don't think that is connected to Kerbal Space Command for some reason. I'm not sure what was what the deal was. I'll have to check into that. But 
Um, I was on mission and I wanted to pay more attention to this, make sure that we could do what we needed to do and get back. Now, if we did end up stranding our Kerbal in orbit or, or even landed on the moon, we had 80 days to figure out how to get there uh, and save them, save the Kerbal and get back. Uh, I don't know how I do it at this point because we don't have, I mean, we have the hitchhiker canister, but that's a lot to land with the parts that we have. I mean, it's obviously possible. Anything's possible. Um, but that would have been, that would have been the rescue mission or send up two capsules. One was empty and one was manned by a, a carbonate. All right. So let's uh, get ready to do what we need to do to get down onto the surface of the moon. And this might be the time where I realize, I'm not sure if this is the time. Let's see what this holds. Yeah, right, so that's not bad. So what I end up doing here is um, I put a maneuver node down at the bottom of my trajectory, and I canceled the velocity out uh, by doing the negative uh, or the prograde burn. And what I was attempting to do is to try to determine when I should start my um, deorbit burn or my slowing down burn. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. So I put that note in there and that would be kind of like I, I didn't set it for like a suicide burn at the very end so you get a zero velocity but I, I put it back enough where it kind of gave me some some thought onto where I wanted to do because I didn't really want to land on the edge of the crater even though I would rather have landed in the crater I was I came up short because of my my burn choices but um, I, I just wanted to have a little bit more than a couple seconds of leeway on to decide what I wanted to do next so we're going to float right into the, um, I'll put the, you know, in the Kerbal Alarm, and we'll float down onto that. And once we get there, then we'll start doing our uh, maneuvers. And I, I kind of hate doing this in the dark, and I, unfortunately that's how it had to happen. However, as, as we get closer, then the sun will rise, and, and you'll be able to see things a little bit better. Uh, this is the point where I changed my mind. Okay, this is what happened. In this instance, my battery was almost dead. We were in going to be in the dark for most of the time, so I wasn't sure whether or not we'd actually come out to the sun side in time to charge the batteries. So what I did was I aborted that landing. So uh, we abort, and we set it all up again. I'll go probably, I don't know, maybe uh, probably 30 degrees or 40 degrees through the circle and then start my, and then just kind of deorbit again. And then set it up again with that uh, suicide burn node. That's not really a suicide, but an almost suicide burn node. All right, so I am bringing back up my my orbit here. The periapsis is high enough where I don't hit any mountains, and I'll end up going through and you know doing it all again. So you get to see it twice. Fortunate for you, uh, it was a pain in the ass for me, but that's okay. It's what we like to do here. Okay, so we're going to come into the sunlight, then we'll charge our batteries back up, and we'll see where we stand. So I don't know if I said, um, I think I said a, a, just a node just to, to kind of get where I want to deorbit. It wasn't, uh, I don't think it was anything specific, if I remember correctly. So we'll time accelerate. And here we are. Now we'll just, yeah, I just picked a random, uh, I just burnt prograde, oh, sorry, I burnt retrograde. Uh, to slow us down to kind of bring down the trajectory a little bit into the into the moon And we'll go ahead and do that and Just you know a nice view of Kerbin the Sun and the corn, you know this the edge view of the moon Which is kind of cool and then you get this monstrosity of a lander, you know kind of silhouetted by the Sun But hey, it's you know Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and art is not everyone's forte, and I don't know if anyone would think that was art. It is kind of cool, though. So, we just changed into um, 
not in orbit. We just broke orbit, and <clears throat> as you can see, the camera changed. But here we go. Now I'm going to set up my maneuver node again at the bottom of my path and kind of give me an idea of where I should uh, be. Well, you know, I'd like to be sort of at like maybe 50 meters per second and at that maneuver node and not like 500. Uh, I had a trouble, or well, I had trouble at one time before I really started figuring this out is I'd wait too long to burn and then it wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be able to stop in time because um, the engines just weren't enough thrust for what I was trying to do to them I was you know waiting to the last minute and uh, I always ended up hitting the uh, hitting the surface pretty hard so here we go we're just moving to that maneuver node we used carbo alarm clock again and we're going to just use that maneuver node as kind of like an alarm and also like like you see i'm kind of doing some burns just to kind of negate some of that velocity because if five or six hundred meters per second is kind of fast when you're talking of less than a uh, less than 10 kilometers of, of altitude and it could be less because there are some uh, mountains and depressions on this um, surface so we could be in that high area and all of a sudden you're just landing there and not you don't have the time that you thought you did but you know just doing this and and this is a use of fuel that you know some might say it's unnecessary and that's fine I, I don't I don't have a problem with saying that I know there are more fuel efficient ways to land and I just wanted to make sure that I got down without killing a Kerbal since this is not a let's reset kind of deal um, this was playing for keeps and it was just my way of kind of giving a little bit of extra insurance but you don't have to do that it's your choice and what we're doing is we're gonna coast down and I'll just kind of burn kill some of my velocity and then set up again now you can see I just deleted that node because we fell way short of that doing our burns which i knew was going to happen it's not a big deal but i'm trying to figure out where i want to land i don't know if i want to land in the crater or on the flat spot i don't want to land on the edge uh if i can help it so i'm kind of just deciding negating velocities and then you know letting it coast down and as you just watch the um retrograde vector on the nav ball when it gets you know as it gets closer to the to the bottom of the nav ball uh that means you're kind of going more vertical so you want to kill some of your hor horizontal velocity as well you'd rather hit when you're going to touch down you want to touch down at like a zero horizontal velocity you want to you know, so you don't want to skip across or tip over and those are the things that i found out uh, the hard way when i first started playing ksp so it looks like we're going to come just shy of that ridge uh, in, in this crater which is cool and you can see some of the ground scatter start now and um, I did not put landing lights on this so it's another reason why I w wanted to land in the day and I, I forgot about the landing lights but uh, you need some kind of guide to tell you how close you are to the ground and normally it's a shadow and I did find the shadow so we'll we'll be using that to kind of guide us and how close we are to the surface and uh, you know I'd, I just keep my velocity low as I can uh, that way I, I don't have to make crazy adjustments or you know I don't give myself enough time and crash into the surface uh, so that's basically what this is going to be I'm going to speed it up a little bit and as you can see we make a nice landing we're falling that shadow right down and it's just the, just above the nav ball. Nice touchdown. Keep the vertical speed low. Uh, we're hardly moving horizontally, which is great. Make sure your nav ball is set to surface and not to orbit because that'll cause a problem. So we landed, and we're going to do a bunch of science. We're going to spam science, which I'm not going to show you too much of. But I will uh, do some science here. And also we'll throw a flag down because... Any monumental event in the Kerbal Society requires a mission flag. And uh, here's our brave Kerbal Knot now. And he's going to do some EVA reports. And he'll do a little jump off this uh, wonderful landing craft. 
quite a large one for what it should be, but uh, we'll test out the jetpack, get that rolling, you know, do some jetpack aerobatics. And we'll go ahead and do some science here and then throw down the flag. And leave a lovely message for our Kerbal descendants who are future mission goers who use the moon as a scientific sandbox, if you will. No pun intended. And, you know, with that, that uh, is another cap in the feather. Another feather in the cap, I should say. Whoa, getting late today. Um, you know, our next steps, we could do more moon missions or we could do a mission on Minmus. And I would love to do that very soon, and it could be within the next couple videos. But, um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. I know Duna is, uh, I've been to Duna in other games, and um, it's it's not very difficult. It just takes a while to get there, um, and you have to be really cognizant of, I've never done anything with the life support system, so this is kind of all new to me. I, I, I've made, uh, made a couple errors at times, but uh, for the most part, the life support is not too much of a concern when you're talking inside the Kerbin system. It's if you leave it, then, you know, obviously any manned mission either has to A, come back, or B, be resupplied. Now, if you're talking launch windows to Duna or even Laith, um, you could get into some serious trouble because, you know, sometimes the launch windows could be almost a year from when you uh, need them to be. Uh, you know, if we go there and then all of a sudden something happens, maybe a life support system breaks and they're half life support and uh, their life support's only good for a year. Oh, look at that backflip. Yes, aerobatics with rocketry. I thought that was cool. Um, so, I mean, if you have a life support issue, uh, maybe you put the life support at the bottom of your lander and when you landed, you ended up breaking something or, or you broke your lander leg and it crashed into the life support, so you're down some life support. Well, if you only had planned for a year, and that is a long time, but the next launch window is in a year and they're already down to half, you see where it's going with this. You know, these, this life support makes it a little bit more tricky and it definitely kind of slows you down on what you what you can and can't do um, you know so you don't take as big of a chunk out but um, once we finished uh, spamming our science now we're gonna take off and uh, this is where things get a little bit hairy because what I ended up doing is I ended up turning off two engines and then pumping fuel from those two tanks to the other tanks so I came back basically limping on two engines and I did that um, and I don't know if it really necessarily meant anything because we didn't ditch any materials. So it didn't really change what the fuel was doing. You know, I, I didn't it shouldn't have changed the Delta V at all. But I just wanted to have two engines running instead of four. But now that I think about it, I don't know if it necessarily made a difference because we didn't ditch those uh, engines. So we didn't really change the profile or the mass of the vehicle. So it still had the same amount of delta V, but I guess that makes sense. So uh, you know, if anyone notices or knows whether or not that changing, ter turning off two engines of the same type will actually affect the delta V of the vehicle or the you know the rocket, uh, I don't think it does. Now that I have you know time to review it, I think actually just made it more difficult for me and it actually took us twice as long to do the burns because there's only two engines instead of four but the delta v requirement and the delta v capacity were still the same so um you know we'll set up our return i get into this strange orbit but i, I don't really care so i just set up my maneuver node uh, it takes me a little bit to set up my maneuver node to get the correct uh curb and periapsis and i ended up getting it close to 20k and um, then, you know, we'll shoot back, we'll go in, we'll crash, I mean, land. Um, but uh, once we get into the atmosphere, I'll kind of point out what my, th <laughs> what the problem that I really put off until the very last minute was all about. 
and like I said, I, I had literally no fuel left. Once I complete this maneuver, you'll see uh, I only have, it's just two seconds in, in vacuum, but it, I think it's, and I can't read it now, but I, it's close to, I think it's like 40 meters per second. So uh, literally on fumes and uh, made it back, landed. I thought that was pretty good. I didn't think I was going to make it once I took off from the moon. I thought I was going to going to be stranded there, at least in orbit, around uh, like an, a, a really big orbit around Kerbin. But um, it turned out okay. And now here here we're going to land. And, and as you may remember, I dropped off my uh, my um, heat shields when we when we launched or when we made our burn towards the moon. That was the incorrect staging that happened. So I'm heating up quite rapidly. I ended up just kind of turning the craft a little bit and uh, tried to dissipate some of the heat across more surface or different surfaces. So you'll see me turn and, uh, you know, just trying to heat up everything and not just one thing to try to save the science experiments because that basically that... Um, Materials Bay and those two goo containers were like prime heat area. Uh, they were at the very bottom of the craft, so I ended up just trying to dissipate that heat across more surface. Uh, and I don't know why the parachutes deployed. And I think in deadly reentry, those parachutes should, if they if they accidentally deploy or if they get deployed, they should just burn right off. They shouldn't even uh, be viable. But uh, so we get through this shock heating. And we're fine. We didn't lose anything. Um, we'll go ahead and just make the landing. So basically that was it. And uh, I learned a little bit here as well as uh, had some fun. So I'll hopefully enjoy it. Uh, if you do or don't, leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are. Also, if anyone knows about that Delta V math, let me know. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, comment, and um, catch me on the next one. Thanks.